has made progress, and we cite Article 22, uh, 32, 33, 34, 36, which among others provides for affirmative action for women. There are laws like Equal Opportunities Commission Act, National Women's Council Act, Domestic Violence Act, Prohibition of Female Genital Mutilations Act, Prevention of Trafficking in Persons Act, Persons with Disability Act, the Public Finance Management Act, which instructs the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development and Equal Opportunities to issue gender and equity certificate to all ministries before any budget is approved in Parliament. When you look at global statistics of 72 million children of pre-primary age still excluded from school system, two-thirds are girls. We have seen of late what is happening in Afghanistan, what is happening in other countries in the world. Women still hold only 18% of world parliamentary seats. Violence against women still remains high. In many countries, policies, legal frameworks, and social justice are not adequate. The SDGs, one of which is maternal health, is still not achieved for women. And therefore, as a country, we have entrenched a clear policy where we believe that society where women and girls are treated as inferior to men and boys, a vicious circle of limited education, poor employment opportunities, ill health, forced marriages, and all too frequently, violence and exploitation can be established and perpetuated. Therefore, focusing more on girls offer an opportunity to replace this vicious circle of problems related to gender equality to one that puts women at the heart of their families and communities. We have turned our focus on dismantling the harsh cultural and religious practices that subjugate women and perpetuate multiple forms of discrimination, oppression and violence, and I call upon you to focus your studies in this area, especially how we can liberate women who remain custodians of protecting and reinforcing cultural practices that subjugate women.